In the late 1940s, submarines had become an exciting thought for navies all around the world because they could stay under the sea undetected. The only problem was that any source of energy would take up too much oxygen to work and would have to be refueled too often for the sub to be effective. By the early 1940s, nuclear fission had established itself as a form of energy that could work for months on end without using any oxygen. Rolls-Royce built a reactor called the PWR-2 for the Royal Navy. This pressurized water reactor would use nuclear fission to heat condensed water which would make steam, which would turn a turbine. The turbine would power a propeller and all secondary systems such as lighting. The USS Nautilus was the first nuclear powered submarine to go to sea in 1955. The USS Triton was also put to sea in 1955 but was the first nuclear sub to be retired in 1969. The USS Skipjack combined nuclear reactors with an albacore hull which made it very fast. Later, in 1960, the USS Enterprise was put to sea. It was the first nuclear aircraft carrier. The USS Long Beach was the first nuclear cruiser ship and was built in 1961. The Russians fielded their first nuclear sub in 1958. The Russian Alpha class sub used a liquid metal reactor. This used nuclear fission to heat metal, which would heat air, which would turn a turbine. The Russian Typhoon class subs were the biggest nuclear subs ever built and weighed in at over 26,000 tons. Many Russian nuclear icebreakers exist because of their abilities to withstand the Arctic cold air sent into and they increase production. The Rubis and the Barracuda class are only a few of the nuclear submarines that the French have built. The aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle is another French built nuclear ship. The British Vanguard class are so efficient that they can last a whole lifetime without refueling. These submarines are always at risk of meltdowns, and it has happened that radiation is spilled into the ocean, which is bad for the environment.